Welcome back, commissioners. Welcome back, public. Uh, super. That was a great morning. I mean, there was so much information there. I think my head is still reeling from all the information that, that we got today. Um, but it was a it was a good way to really think about how to systemically approach uh, some of the challenges, especially in data disaggregation and language access. So, um, hope it was as useful to you as it was to me. But I think now um, the next hour, hour and a half, we have just a lot of work to go through and. In terms of thinking about how we want to uh, move forward for ourselves. So, uh, reflecting on yesterday's presentations regarding the immediate challenges and today's on the data disaggregation and language access um, for impacting AA and HPI communities, especially related to um, Executive Order 14031 and our priorities 1, 5, and 6. So, as we start thinking about developing our recommendations, time is important for us because there are things, as you heard already from yesterday and today that the you know the uh, president's work on equity they're already moving forward on recommendations there's opportunities here for us to get engaged early on so I recommend that as a commission we develop recommendations and submit our recommendations on a rolling basis um, this uh, as a president towards mini reports so rather than have one big report at the end of the year that we do sort of mini reports and things that you know we see are moving that we can actually engage in but I wanted to make sure we get your feedback Feedback and, and let's have a little, little discussion about it um, because I think it's important that uh, we're, we're all on the same page on that. So any, any questions anybody might have about rolling recommendations? I, I think I agree with you, Sonal, um, uh, because we have such limited time and you wanna get as many out as soon as possible so that the administration can have time to work on it. Great, thank you, Kimberly. So no anybody, one, anybody, oh, sorry, go ahead, Ajahn. I was just gonna ask, were you thinking rolling kind of across issues? So wherever within all of our priorities, wherever there's an idea that we can move to just Correct. go ahead and, I think that's great. Yes, I support that. Um, well, great, thank, thank you for clarifying that. I generally appreciate that. Um, yes, rolling across issues, no one issue, not, not you know, only X or only Y, but we should be able to do it across issues. Uh, Dr. Underwood. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, the, the community is so diverse. And uh, so is there gonna be, uh, just listening to the data disaggregation uh, and the terms that are used and everything. So are, uh, are we free to kind of uh, let other commissioners know about the diversity of this, uh, these communities? Because uh, I, I think that all of us could uh, come up to speed on the diversity of some of the communities, even as we're going through these uh, recommendations, because these recommendations are going to be mean a little bit uh, uh, differently as applied to different communities. Yeah, and and Dr. Underwood, that's a that's a great question, um, and and I may not answer it completely. So let's just let's um, that's a we should keep that in mind for all of our recommendations because we are in diverse communities and uh, some things. And maybe maybe the way to approach it is to recognize that this may affect some communities, not affect all communities. But let's just be upfront and intentional about it because I think it's important to to state our intentionality um, and and to make sure that uh, that we recognize uh when when we're when, when we do see that so i think that's a really good point so thank you for, yeah, thank but, you for but are, are we free to communicate with other commissioners Correct. to Correct. tell them hey look this is uh, what's going on in this community or you may want to see this nuance At Absolutely, and I hope you do. Um, right. this, this, the commission should be talking to each other. Do not feel like, again, do not feel like you can't. We can't reach out to each other. We are a community, so please definitely feel free to do that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, so we're going back to our famous Miro board. And um, and I think what, what I'd like to do is we started yesterday um, and on items which commissioners would like additional information to inform recommendations. You see that the, that's in blue on your left hand corner there. Uh, the light blue on the left hand corner or light green, I don't even know what the color is. Um, but that there's a lot there and we have a lot, of, we had a lot of um, requests for more information. You may have 
have some more from today. So if you wanted to, we, if we want to, we can go through some of those um, and see if there's more questions that you all have in terms of, um, and, and can we see a little bit more detail on that mirror board? Can we go deeper into those on that, on the top left? Oh, I don't think we can make it that. Uh, so why don't we do this? We'll start capturing the information. We can certainly send out the information to everyone. But based on today's uh, presentation, are there specific things that we can, um, that you want more information on for today's presentation? Ajay? Yeah, um, I would like to, one question either for Karthik or um, the other presenter, what are the different ways federal agencies are collecting the data for A, NH, and PI? And uh, I mean, which agencies are collecting the data, what forms they are using it, and in, in, as part of their, uh, uh, you know, program right now, have they, have they what are the other ways of data collection are being explored for implementation across the agencies? Yeah, great question, Ajay. Grace? Yeah, just similar question to Ajay, um, just building on that um, specifically, uh, whether data collection is being done um, in accessible ways, because we just know lots of folks aren't being surveyed or asked information in their own language, so. Yeah, great question. Dr. Underwood? Uh, I, I want to kind of clarify the like the intersectionality of this data. So, uh, are they like you know veterans and and, and certain uh, groups, uh, yeah. rural areas and certain groups? I'm trying to figure out because uh, you know the uh, if, if the administration has certain objectives for rural areas and certain objectives uh, for uh, racial and ethnic minorities, and how does the intersectionality of that? And are they collecting that? Or do we have to find out ourselves some other way? Yeah, that's a great question, and it's good to ask. Daniel De Kim. Hi, uh, I would just love to get access uh, to that database to kind of play around with it. It's, I, th I think he uh, he mentioned that it was in a, a, a beta uh, a, a, a test situation. Yeah. But as soon as it's available, it'd be really great uh, to be able to to use it to get information. Um, and the entire presentation from AAPI data, if, if there's any way to, to get that slideshow, it, it'd be great for talking points. Yeah, we will send that around. We will definitely send around the presentations that uh, you all have seen. So I think the um, one other way, in uh, the, thank you for asking that question. One other way for us to think about this also for the data disaggregation subcommittee, you may want to think about inviting Karthik into the subcommittee and and uh, either having him participate in the subcommittee or present to the subcommittee because I think there's a, there was a lot in that presentation which she had to quickly skip through. And uh, I think there's, there's a, there's there's a way we can certainly benefit from him. Uh, Kaying? Yeah, I I guess what what I need to see more, um, and maybe it's just me and my fear that I may not have all my information is um, the equity plans that she was talking about, the data desegregation plan that the, the federal government is talking about, because we don't have to start from scratch, but we could. Uh, elevate priorities uh, or help them prioritize what their their recommendations are to all federal agencies, right? And yeah. so that's one thing. The other is uh, uh, just building on what um, uh, Dr. Underwood said. I think that geographically too, I think is an issue because in the Midwest, we you know the makeup of our Asian Americans are very different. How do we you know talk about that? Um, not just the national level, and then. Um, finally, I think my uh, concern is at what point can we bring in communities who are doing a lot of work on the ground already? I understand that we, we can open it up, but I will also really uh, think strategically about where, uh, who, and you know, at the grassroots level are, is already doing this work and how can we include them in there in reviewing the uh, plan or recommendations and or contributing to the rec recommendations. Yeah, Kang, that's a great, uh, great set of points that you made. Um, I, I, my guess, and this is just, you know, I can't speak for the for the government in, in any way here. My guess is the equity plans that get submitted 
still have to be reviewed. And so I think what we can do is we can ask them to come um, speak to you in, in one of the subcommittees and give you uh, insight and a, a input into what did the plans say and, and it might give us a chance to also um, help inform some of the plans as they're reviewing them. So I would suggest that we should invite them to come speak to us. And as opposed to community input, I think that's great. And I think uh, subcommittees may want to think about doing regional forums to invite community members in uh, to to give input and to to make sure that we're taking the input as as we're built, developing the recommendation. So I would recommend the subcommittees think about bringing bringing that in. But it's a great question. Right now. Uh, yeah, so the, the data disaggregation topic, is it new? You know, there's a lot of us have been doing it for about 20 years looking at it. Um, and the I think what I'm worried about is, is the Herculean task. You know, you're talking about all the agencies and all of them have different ways of collecting the data and it hasn't been standardized. My worry is that we spend a lot of time in trying to educate us on, on doing that part. Um, and we don't have enough time to prioritize what we really need to go after. Um, is there a way, uh, and I would assume what we're talking about is usable data for local groups. Um, uh, how do we integrate the, the, what is it, the IWG? And the yep, inter, inter working inter, inter uh, agency working group, yep. Inter agency working groups, uh, as well as our regional teams, uh, to figure out because because people are doing it. But I think the 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 common answer that we got before was your groups are too small to to sample. But AAPI data and a lot of other investigators have shown we can do it. You just don't have the resources and the infrastructure to do it right now. Um, but people are showing you models how to do it. So how do we go after those? How do we bring those models to the table? Yep. Um, so you know, I think that's a great question, and and you're right, right? This is on the data disaggregation work um, for us to recognize that this work has been going on for a long time. I know the Obama administration very much focused on this. And so this is a build. So uh, I think what you heard today from Dr. Nelson and, and the team is really about they're building upon the work that already been done. If you remember, chief data officers were created in the Obama administration. Now we have an a, you know, equity working group. So there's a lot that's happening in this. I think what we could do is inform how the next steps will be done. And that would be very helpful to do that. So I 100% agree with you that we should build where, where we need to build to, as opposed to needing to redo an assessment, because I think the assessments are already, um, people have them. So I think what we really need to think about, and what I would urge the group to think about the subcommittee, is how do we want to move it forward? And this is why the rolling submissions will help a lot, which is uh, really informing what the next steps that they do on the, uh, in the interwork, uh, in, to, in the IWG, but also as recommendations are put out through the, through some of the working groups. So thank you for that. Hi, Jen. Um, I was interested in the overlay between some of the labor market data that we heard about yesterday and the API um, data work today, just thinking a little bit more about um, trying to understand where communities are concentrated in low-wage sectors and if there's a way to also understand access to benefits and access to a safety net and where that may be, um, what we might learn through disaggregated data about our communities. If that exists anywhere, I'd be interested in that. And then I'm also interested in how we or others, um, the government um, or even people in the field are using some of this data to do forecasting in our communities, just trying to understand what are some of the emerging trends, where are we going to see a lot of growth in our communities, et cetera. Um, who's doing that and if it's happening in our government at all. Jen, that's a great question, and I think that is uh, something that you know, if uh, our, our the, the uh, team can help us identify where we might be able to get some of those answers, that's a great question. I also think that um, as the working group might want to, sub, the subcommittee may want to think about um, inviting in maybe somebody from the Urban Institute because I know they've done forecasting before to give us some input on on what they have seen and other agencies or where they have seen this work. It might be 
very helpful too. It's a great idea. Uh, Louisa, happy birthday again. Thank you. Um, so I think most of the questions that I had have been answered, but I am interested in this accountability thing. It's great that our federal government under Biden is doing all of this stuff, but we have to get down to the local level. And, you know, how do we, how do we make sure the state and the counties are actually gathering the data that yeah. we need so that we can pinpoint, you know, issues that we can address? And then uh, the other question I had or comment I had is, uh, I think as commissioners, we have the big stick, right? And we have to do our job in terms of helping the federal agencies to hold local governments accountable and then also just hooking up with the community groups. So there's that. I'm hoping we can do that. I don't know if there's a process that we have to go through to get, you know, the right people from local government into a meeting with us. And then the other thing, is it possible to get a list of um, community groups outside of the ones that were named, like NCAPA, those are big community groups, but are there community groups by region that they've met with? Yeah, Louisa, I think those are those are great, great points. Let me start with the, your second question, and then let's, uh -huh. um, my guess is when we meet with the regional networks, they can help us because they're, they're already interacting with community groups, not just uh -huh. the national ones, but at the regional level. So uh -huh. um, we should we should ask the regional networks this question because they're very connected into community. And I think um, that would be a benefit to us to, to, to ask that question of them, uh, not just at the federal level, but at the, at the, at the regional level. So I, that's a great question. Regarding the, the state local versus national. I think this is going to be uh, sort of an interesting question as to where does the federal government have jurisdiction to re require and where does the federal, where is it a state debt government's responsibility to do? And that is going to be, I think, one of the set of questions that we will have to ask along the way, which is what can the federal government do and what is a, you know, how can they interact with the state to encourage? Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not always sure, at least my experience in the past has been the federal government can't mandate certain things, but they can they can require or ask. And that's sort of, you know, how we set the standards to do that. But that's a set of questions we should ask. And it's a great set of questions for us to be asking, which is how can we align federal, state, local? So um, so I think that's a that's something we should always keep in mind through all of our subcommittees. Um, but I think uh, I think we'll we'll come up against some of those questions. Thanks. Um, Kamal? Hi guys, uh, uh, really, really love today's data presentations, uh, especially uh, uh, the DNA framework that Karthik uh, uh, laid forth. Uh, I think it, it organizes thoughts in a, in a very nice way uh, towards action. But I, I would really love to see uh, so, uh, some resources dedicated to, um, you know, putting together. Uh, Again, a list of resources for the the community, you know, for for nonprofits, for local level commu community organizations that could access uh, data. Because uh, look, we have a, a very limited time on this commission, uh, and you know, I think the the longer term vision of this is to have communities uh, help themselves. Uh, you know, obviously the federal government's going to help, but but if we could empower local uh, communities and local organizations. To, and, and, and do that by, by giving them access to data, uh, maybe uh, form, um, I don't know, s some binder, some, something uh, where, that they could reference. I think it would be very, very helpful. I guess, Kamal, you are saying some kind of data warehouse where community can access the data, create reports out of well, it and run well, them. Not well, just, not just the data itself, but like the, you know, there's, uh, I mean, just from today's presentations, there's over a dozen different areas where uh, data is being, a uh, uh, dozen different areas where data is being collected from, right? Like uh, 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 different uh, 
uh, again, resources that are online and offline. Uh, so it would be nice to put that all together and offer it to the communities and say, hey guys, this is stuff that is available to you. Uh, yeah. Reach out to these folks uh, and, and go forth, do great things. Yep, uh, that's a great that's a great point. Um, I think there's a lot of data online. I think that's a good place to point people to. Where is it and where can people go find it? That's a uh, great point. Thank you for that and really appreciate it. Carrie. You're on mute. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm a little uncoordinated here. Information overload uh, from uh, today and yesterday. And uh, let me just say that it uh, is so compelling. Like I said, uh, it's important uh, and really call, is a call to action uh, for, for this commission. Uh, thank you to for all of the people that, that participated in putting uh, this two-day meeting together. Um, um, and I don't want it to sound like a broken record. Uh, 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 and and da gathering data uh, is is definitely important. Uh, but but as I mentioned yesterday, um, uh, the time is now. We need to act on some things right now. Um, uh, uh, people's lives are in jeopardy. Uh, General Westmoreland once said uh, that uh, Asians don't value life. Uh, the way, quote, we do, unquote. You know, um, do people have to die um, in Hawaii uh, be before uh, 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 something gets addressed? Right? Um, um, gathering data uh, is good. We don't even know if uh, a phase one environmental impact report has been done. We don't even know uh, if any kind of geological survey has been done. We have no idea um, um, uh, if uh, uh, HHS has done uh, any kind of uh, public health survey, right? Uh, and, and what kinds of multi-agency, multi-pronged approach is being taken to address this issue right now? Um, and so, and so, and so, I'm confused. Uh, uh, about uh, uh, the 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 next steps moving forward, is there something that we can do right now? Can we ask uh, EPA and all these different agencies uh, to present their reports on what is being done, if anything at all? So, Carrie, I think that um, I appreciate you're consistently pushing us on this. And so thank you for uh, continuing to push us. And I do think that you are right. So I think as we uh, go through the next steps of developing our subcommittees, I think that is a job of one of the subcommittees to do, which is uh, to reach out to the agencies and ask these questions. And I think um, as part of our rolling recommendations, this is certainly we can we can also recommend what are the next steps after you get these briefings. So I think there's a just even sometimes asking the questions moves the conversation. So uh, just just to give everybody an update, you know, a, a thought on this, which is, you know, by asking everyone to present uh, the last couple of days, it's made it's 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 focused the agencies on um, what are they doing on AA and HPI issues. So so there so again even asking the question is important. So please keep that in mind that this is important. So when you do ask, it also voices the next round of conversation. So please please keep that in mind. So Carrie. We hear you, and I think this is going to be important as we set up the subcommittees to think about what's the first step of one of the subcommittees to do. And let's think about what subcommittee that is and how to get started on that. So thank you for continuing to push us. Mia? Mia, um, sorry. Hey, thanks. Um, I 100% I, uh, agree with Carrie. I think it's good for us to know what our short and long-term goals are going to be uh, when setting up a subcommittee. I think each subcommittee will need to figure out sort of what those goals will entail uh, so that we we have a plan going forward um, and and put up front uh, the, the most sort of um, uh, emergent issues uh, up first and then and then go down the line of list of issues. Um, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, um, which is often not talked about in um, 
in, in our communities is the amount of uh, transracial uh, and transnational adoptees that are within our communities and are often sort of left out of the conversations around um, around our issues. And I would love to see uh, not only in things like uh, data disaggregation, but also in health, um, uh, et cetera, to include um, some uh, some sort of disaggregation around adoptees, um, uh, particularly because it's such an issue that that isn't often addressed, and uh, also thinking about the the issues around trafficking um, uh, and and migration issues um, also affect transracial adoptees, and many of the transracial transnational adoptees are from Asian uh, countries. Um, so I think it's really important that we um, we also bring to light issues around adoption um, that that is also like harming our our the uh, our countries of origin or our ancestry um in, in the fact that it's you know moving kids for, away from uh their cultural ancestry so just wanted to bring that up as sort of a topic for folks to think about as they are uh doing subcommittees is that uh this population is highly invisible uh they're often seen as children although most of them are actually adults because uh, uh, adoption is actually waning. So really hope that uh, folks keep that in mind as well. Mia, thank you. And keep reminding us and also feel free to reach out to commissioners on various subcommittees to ask that question too. I think that's a great point. Uh, Nahi? Hi, I just wanna second Mia, like that was, that was great. Uh, really quickly would like to just suggest we get some more information about how parts of our community are being attacked based on multiple identities. So I was thinking in particular religion and thinking of what's happened to the Sikh community, the Muslim community. Um, and it would be great to hear more about, for example, like it was wonderful to hear from Kristen, what the civil rights division's doing to address those issues, what DOJ is doing generally. Um, the White House has done a lot uh, of outreach on these issues and it would just be great to hear more about it. Yeah, that is a very good point. And I think um, as we do the anti-hate uh, subcommittee, I think that's important. And we should, we'll talk about it in a minute. But please keep that in mind and please keep raising this because it's important that we do get that. So uh, that would be very good information for us to have. Thank you. Um, Amy. Thank you. I couldn't figure out my raise the hand function. Didn't work. Um, two things. I, I do agree with carry uh, and and others who have mentioned the red hill uh, water situation um i know that the our congressional delegation is on top of it and um locally we're having uh uh hearings and um uh, with the it's really the department of defense and the navy that are uh, the problem here but at maybe at some point offline you can figure out What's the easiest way to just communicate uh, our concern to uh, the, the the agencies that are involved? Because our congressional people and Hawaii are are actively uh, addressing the issue, and it is in the headlines, and we have uh, efforts underway. Uh, the second thing I wanted to comment on is that. Um, uh, collecting data and disaggregating data is really helpful. And oftentimes, they do, we, I would recommend that some of the language access issues and data collection, uh, you know, there's a lot of overlap there. We're trying to get some of our agencies to collect data on language, primary language use. So uh, it's not just the collection of data, it's what kind of data are they collecting. And I, and I think our language access committee could weigh in on that and cooperate with the data collection a disaggregation group and i think the other point i wanted to um while i have the the um, microphone here is really the issue of less commonly spoken languages uh it is really very very difficult uh, for any uh, uh for these uh communities and so that 
would be, I think, an area for special focus and attention of the language access issue um, committee. And one other item I'd like to make sure gets added somewhere is the COFA community. That's the Compact of Freely Associated States. In the, it, it's an international agreement with three countries, and they are allowed to migrate to the United States, but they don't have hardly any benefits and are highly discriminated. And right now in Hawaii, it's a of the most vulnerable community. And so somewhere <laughs> I'd like to make sure that we include that item in, as in some uh, statement. So that's about it. Thank Oh, one more thing. In Hawaii, we did pass the state language access law in 2006. It's probably one of the best in the nation, but we have barely implemented you know, we just, you know, keep on attacking everyone saying, uh, duh, that's the law. And and same with it's Title not Title Six, but the implementation is a real problem uh, in terms of language access. So I'll be joining the language access committee. Awesome. Thank you. And and Amy, thank you for these great, great comments. And I think this is um this is and thank you for reminding us of the of the of the state legislators already involved in in Red Hill. So uh, appreciate that. And then and as for I think uh, COFA and other and the other pieces that you raise, I think again within subcommittees, these are the discussions we should be having, and and what are the recommendations we want to make, and how do we want to do that? That's a that's something that we I hope I certainly hope that that, that the subcommittee will take that on. Thank you for uh, thank you for agreeing to be on the on the language access. A subcommittee, as I if I if I heard you correctly, <laughs> yes, thank you, Ter Teresita. Hi. <clears throat> so my question is on a slightly different track about what we can do as a commission, as a committee, and as individual commissioners. Uh, we have a huge array of issues before us, some that are regional, some even more localized, and some really broad spectrum. Uh, I remember one of the comments of the former commissioners, uh, I think it was Jim Nguyen, who, because of his passion for data aggregation, you know, he went ahead and pursued using, you know, his role as commissioner to be able to push for changes. So I would like to understand better what our latitude is in being able to act as commissioners, even if you know if it's in, under the broad uh, umbrella of issues that we're going to take on as a commission, but then more highly specialized uh, for a specific stakeholder group or region. Um, Teresita, I think that's a great question. I'm going to ask Emmeline to also weigh in here because she knows more about the details of, of, of to do this. But I, I think the, the, my one bit of recommendation would be to say, um, you know, let, let's take the issues we want to work on. What are issues that already are moving in process where we may be able to weigh in and help move along faster? Um, and then what else do we want to do? So again, these are rolling recommendations. We don't have to do everything at once. We don't have to get all of it down at once. I think we have to get uh, pieces moving along. So that's, I, I don't have a grand answer as to what the right thing is, but I do say, I think this is our role as a commission to to work that out and to, and to think about what is it we want to do. I don't think this is, we're not limited. We're limited by the scope of the, the, the executive order, but what we're not limited for is how, how we choose to move forward. But that, that requires us subcommittees coming together on agreements. Does that help? Yeah, that's absolutely right, um, Sonal. So um, you, you'll want to focus on what your charge is within the executive order. However, um, how you approach that can be done through the subcommittees, and if you need additional information to inform this, those decisions, um, if they're related, that is permissible. Yeah, great. Um, Michelle? Thank you. Um, I think Amy covered some of what I was going to address regarding COPA migrants, so I'll let that go. Um, I, the other item is with regard to HUD. 
um, that Native Hawaiians have different rules for its FHA program in HUD that limit their ability to refinance and access capital. I think it's a critical issue. While we talk about economic recovery after COVID, it's a longstanding issue and would love to be able to hear from HUD on its equity plan and how we might address some of the inequity on a federal program and why it looks so different um, for Native Hawaiian communities on trust lands. Um, and then I'll I'll leave it at that. I think Amy captured the COPA migrant issues. Michelle, that's great. And I think this is one of the, I think um, I've already heard two agencies that we should think about bringing to our next commission meeting, EPA and HUD. So uh, thank you for that recommendation. It's a great point. Uh, Smita. Thank you. Um, just one quick note is I, I know, will we please get copies of slides and some of the contact info from the present presenters because a lot of data that's been presented, that's fantastic. I'd love to get through a little bit more in detail and be very helpful. Um, the one question that through two things I had a comment on, one, just in general, there's been this question about sort of uniformity amongst agencies about how we are going to, you know, how everyone attacks, whether it's disaggregation or disseminates information. And I was just curious, how are we as a commission, um, are we going to become, I would, it would seem to me to be a missed opportunity if we couldn't help generate some of that consistency and uniformity amongst the agencies so is there a way is that something we can do or we can be sort of a place where people can come to ask questions or we can help make recommendations on how to how all of the agencies are sort of have the one consistent process um, the second question i had was on um, hate crimes and some of the that that piece of it i know we've talked about physical crimes i just want to make sure we're not leaving out cyber crimes um, a lot of that is sort of the beginning you know it's, it's such a um, targeting can start so much earlier and then ultimately manifest itself into physical crimes i want to make sure that's on our radar as we're as we're pursuing that issue so Smitha, great points. I think cyber is an important question. I think, again, we, we may wanna think about inviting somebody from um, from the DOJ cyber team to come in and give us some input on, on that, especially for the, the subcommittee. I'm not we being uh, the subcommittee may want to think about that. And then um, regarding uniformity amongst agencies. So I think this is where the interagency working group is very helpful for us to interact with because that is what the White House does is they bring um, all of the agencies together to work through what they can and can't do. And again, um, each of these agencies, um, you know, will have their own processes, but this is this is the point of working with the interagency working group. So we should think about how we want to interact with the agent, interagency working group. I think you make a very good point there. Um, I, Jen? Uh, this is a slightly more meta point, but more just thinking about our role as commissioners and just feeling like one of the most important things we could do is leverage this commission and our role to really communicate to our communities that this government is really interested in working for them and that and there's a ton of work that is underway, and the more our communities engage, the stronger that work will be. But just in terms of this broader challenge of the relationship between our communities and the role of government and strengthening that relationship um, as a explicit goal of this commission feels really important. And I just think there's so much good work that's happening and progress that's been made that people don't know about. And I'd love for us to have a stream of work that is specifically about communicating what government is up to, trying to do, and in the process of doing um, that is in the service of our communities as one of the, I just, I feel like too often a lot happens and nobody knows about it. So just want to bridge that gap because I think it's really important for the trust that we're ultimately trying to establish. Ajahn, that is such an incredibly important point. And I think for all of us just to keep in mind, especially through the subcommittees that, um, 
uh, that building trust between community and government is important and that um, it's not us just advocating for community, but also being the bridge in between. So um, how, how do we do that effectively? How do we show how government works for communities and vice versa, how communities could, it could use more help from the government? So I, I think the commission is super important for that. So thank you for raising that. Thank you for reminding us of that. That's important. Grace? Somewhat building on that point and also diverging is the question just, you know, the last administration, um, you know, did a lot that drove a lot of fear in our immigrant communities. And given the data that Karthik shared with us about um, who, you know, part, who parts of our immigrant communities are, it would be really helpful to us to hear more especially from DHS around some of the efforts that they are undertaking um, to uh, undo or uh, provide redress to uh, some of the harms to our communities um, that were uh, elevated in the last five years or so. Um, so I just want to make a plug for that. Sorry, I think that's a great point, Grace. I think we can, again, add to for our next commission meeting, um, but also imagine that uh, the subcommittee could do that also on uh, on the on hate, belonging, and inclusion. Um, Sarah? Mine is re uh, somewhat related to Ijun's point. Um, I'm curious about what the distribution plan is on all of the information. So for example, they talked, to, several people talked about how there were many websites that offered various resources. And that to me requires more of a, um, a lot of people to know that there is a website to go to and to be able to actually get there. And so I, I, I'm curious about the, um, I guess the divide between pushing and pulling information. And this goes back to Tong's point yesterday about um, related to misinformation and disinformation of how we're getting good information out to our communities and whether that's through partnerships, um, whether that's through the media or, um, or what Ijen is talking about is how do we create that dialogue to push the information out instead of putting the onus on our community to come find the information. Yep, Sarah, I think that's a that's a great point and certainly something we should be um, asking as we think about how, how to get the information out to our communities and ensure that they know where to go and um, what not just what's available, but you know how, how to make it easier. Um, I, I will say, I think this is a sad, sadly, this is part of the challenge that we're in in the world where there's just too much information and you're trying to understand which information is relatively uh, good and which is not, and there's so much out there. So, so I think that's something we should keep in mind for all of our recommendations, but also in helping think through um, how we make it easier for our communities, especially given the diversity of our communities. So uh, great point and thank you for, thank you for raising that. Mia, is your hand back? up i just wanted to make sure okay. yeah yeah uh no i wanted to add on to what ijen and sarah were saying which is it'd be great to hear from departments on like what are their outreach to, um what are their outreach plans and understanding that it's better to go to the community rather than asking the community to come to you. Um, and so thinking about like, what are the normal ways that our communities communicate with one another? How is misinformation disseminated? And then how can we transfer the information that we have out into the community to replace the disinformation. Um, I think of it similar to like relational organizing, um, which I'm sure some of you have very familiar with. Um, but uh, I, I think in terms of, you know, particularly immigrant communities and other marginalized communities, a lot of it is through word of mouth. And so how can you tap into those um, sort of systems that are already in place to ensure that this information, that the right information is getting out to the people so that, you know, around COVID, et cetera, that people are getting in the, the information. I think 
lastly, I'm sorry for taking up so much time, is that um, thinking about in terms of when we translate materials, there's always going to be a delay in that. And that needs to be taken into account when delivering resources, because I think that's one of the major reasons why a lot of uh, small business owners who don't speak um, English as their first language may have missed out on some of the resources that were put in place because it took a while for things to get translated. So that needs to be taken into account when delivering those resources because it's unfair to give one group a an advantage over another group. That's not equity. Um, and uh, so I think that's really important for the administration to understand is that, you know, if you are having to translate into different languages, that you need to translate them before you release the, the funds so that everybody has an equal opportunity to try and get those resources. Mia, that is such a great point, and I think that's something that as the equity uh, working group we should think about. Um, uh, Ajay, I'm going to hold on this because we really do need to get to the establishment of subcommittees. We have about 15 minutes uh, before we go to break. So I want to make sure we start, uh, we look at the list of subcommittees that we discussed. I think we discussed sort of additional information and sort of things flagged for further inquiry together. And what I would love for us to do is to talk about the subcommittees and, um, and, and again, we can come back to more inquiry within the subcommittees too. So please keep that in mind. But I'd love for us to talk about subcommittee and subcommittee chairs. So we have uh, language access, data disaggregation, I believe anti-hate belonging um, team. I think that's something that uh, we have talked about. Um, uh, and then economic, uh, economic equity. And health, uh, COVID and health and well-being. I know we discussed other subcommittees yesterday, if I'm not wrong. I think we discussed um, adding, uh, you know, immigration. Uh, I believe we had uh, AANHPI diversity in, uh, in the military, health equity and chronic diseases, uh, disinformation, misinformation and communications, human trafficking. So I think there's things that we could probably put into broader, com uh, broader context and then have the subcommittees look at details. So let me let me suggest an idea, and and feel free to push back. This is just an idea. So anti hate Asia, um, anti Asian hate belonging and inclusion. Um, could we? incorporate the immigration work into that instead of creating more subcommittees, but but, but um, have that subcommittee start looking into that and would that be possible to do? Um, economic and small business, economic uh, justice, small business, can we also incorporate environmental justice into that? Um, and are there other questions we could be asking in that? Uh, potentially, could we put human trafficking um, under the health well-being subcommittee? So these are questions because they, they offer in different places, but it's just, a, I, I'm suggesting just because we're going to have to divide ourselves in the subcommittees and it's time that we're going to have to give and how we do that. So, uh, Carrie, I know you have some questions here. Well, uh, you know, I, I was wondering uh, with the urgency of this groundwater contamination, uh, does it, does it, should it fold under one of these subcommittees or can we simply uh, assemble a task force uh, uh, to take immediate action? I would highly recommend we put it under a subcommittee and the subcommittee can take it on quickly. Um, I, I, I don't, you know, if we start doing special task forces, we're going to be sitting and doing that for everything. So I would urge that we have a subcommittee whose job it is to, um, who's going to take that on to, maybe there's a subgroup within that subcommittee that sort of addresses that. But I, I would suggest that we put it into a subcommittee. I'm good with that as long as we can move on it quickly. So, sir, you should be on a subcommittee that can take that on. <laughs> I volunteer. <laughs> Naheem? I, I'm really struggling because I, I completely understand your point, Sonal. Like, there's only so many people on this uh, commission. There's a lot of different topics. But if I could just put in one quick, like, note to urge that we not put immigration and hate, racism, and belonging together because of the particular challenge of like white nationalism that I think is so enormous right now. It's everything from hate crimes to like 
public official. So like, I mean, it's so enormous. And quite frankly, anyone could argue this about every single category. I understand that. But I think immigration is so specialized and will require a lot of interaction with people at DHS and, and other folks working on it. And this is just a different animal. And so that's just a, a suggestion. I understand if it can't be done, but wanted to put a quick plug for not putting those two together. I, uh, again, I am just offering suggestions. Please do not uh, take this as a requirement. I think this is, I'm just trying to think about the time that you all have, and I want to make sure that um, we are also giving time to the things that we've been asked to do in the, in the um, executive order. So, uh, so please don't, please don't take this. If the, if the group wants to move forward with that, uh, we will certainly create a subcommittee on that, but I just want to keep that in mind. Um, Louisa. I was just going to make a plug for environmental justice. Um, I think it's more appropriate that it's under some health care thing, because the things that our community has to deal with is the aftermath of a, you know, a climate Louisa, disaster. Louisa, I think that is such a great point, and especially yeah. given the D Dr. Balbus's, um presentation yesterday, I think that's a very good point. So let's move, yeah. uh, let's move environmental justice into health. Um, Amy. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, thank you. I, I was, I, I, I think immigration is a really, really big issue and it could be a committee on itself, but if we needed to combine it, I would combine it with language access. Thank you, Amy. Um, other comments on subcommittees? Yeah, I, I have one comment, uh, Sono. There's so much, you know, I don't want to get overwhelmed and I don't think any of the commissioners want to get overwhelmed, but just looking at this list, there is a lot of intersections. Right, I can see immigration and a bunch of other stuff, right? But I think we just got to figure out, you know, how do we connect the dots? And sometimes maybe immigration is on a committee of its own in the beginning, and then maybe it gets folded in after the immigration subcommittee does some work um, on advancing uh, solutions to the issues being faced. But this is a lot. And so I'm hoping that there's guidance from the staff and you, <laughs> Madam well, Chair. I, <laughs> well, I want to like navigate this stuff because it's a lot. Because with yeah. every issue, we also have to deal with what's the communication that we send out, what's the right message. It's a lot. Exactly. <laughs> Louisa, you are doing my job for me. Thank you so much. I'm going to I'm going to recruit you. <laughs> I so so just to re I just want to um again remind everyone that you know um there is also a limited staff within the commission and they have to staff all of us uh to get all of the meetings that we want. So um I would urge us to think about how we um how we work with the team that we have and 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 to use as much as we can together. So um, you know, the more committees they are, the more there's the limited number of, of, of the team sort of having to spread across all of us and request all of the meetings and do all of that. So I really do appreciate um, uh, Louisa's point on this. So what I would suggest, and I, I again, I suggest that we, we have fewer main subcommittees and within the subcommittees, each of the teams figure out what are the, how you are going to prioritize, uh, which issues within that and where, where we can move. I, my one recommendation would be just to, just to put it out from my experience in the past is um, if there are things already moving in government and we can tag on recommendations, it will help us move things faster. There are things that we should do that are medium term. We should continue to do 
them, but but there are some things like the equity task force that is moving and is going to make recommendations. We should really think about how we want to plug into that uh, task, you know, the task force and the recommendations that are coming out. So I, I would urge us to just think about prioritization within the subcommittees, but can we please think through how we want to limit the number of subcommittees, but also work that could go within the subcommittees. I don't think there's a right and a wrong, to be honest. I don't, I don't, I think if, if we want to do immigration within language access, immigration between belonging um, and inclusion, it's really up to us on how we want to approach that. I would urge us to have that conversation. And Dr. Underwood. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, thank you. And, uh, you know, obviously this calls for great executive decision making on your part. <laughs> Maybe you 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 want to add some uh, people to to sort of help you out, but uh, or maybe a, a special committee on committees. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, the 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 thing is, is that of course there's a separation of issues uh, versus broad categories of concern, and uh, so you know it's just kind of reminding ourselves that specific issues don't make a, a broad category of concern. But the one I I, I do want to make a pitch on immigration, and I want to to explain this a little bit. Uh, it's immigration and citizenship status because that's a kind of a political category. And that, that immigration and, and, uh, and citizenship status uh, hits on COFA, it hits on, uh, you know, I always, I'm, I'm from Guam, I always tell people, I'm not an immigrant. Uh, the United States immigrated to us. And so that's a different kind of a whole relationship. So there's a political status issue, there's immigration, and there's citizenship status. And that's, that affects uh, a broad swath of people. So I, I just wanted to uh, make a pitch for that, and uh, we'll, we'll see what you decide, Sona. <laughs> I see how you guys are doing this. <laughs> Kimberly. <laughs> I think I, I put my trust in you as well. Um, <laughs> um, I'm okay with moving the human trafficking, exploitation, uh, gender-based violence into to healthcare, but I know it um, it crosses all the different sectors, whether it's immigration, citizenship status, economics, and small business. Um, you know, Asian hate and belonging. I know that there's a lot of federal government um, initiatives right now with the National Action Plan, the HHS Interagency Work uh, Task Force, the National Advisory Committee. So. You know, there's a, there's a lot of government work on it already. Um, so I, I just want it to be somewhere. <laughs> so you can put it wherever you Kimber want. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate that. Kaying? Yeah, I just want to put a plug in that I really don't want to take immigration and I guess citizenship status off because the Southeast Asian American community has been, you know, dealing with this issue for the last 50 years that we're here. And Someone said yesterday the ma mass in uh, um, rounding up of Southeast Asians and then prioritizing uh, of pushing deportation is a real urgent issue that we're dealing with on a daily basis that's impacting our health and economic as well too. And in the state of Minnesota, we have a lot of South Indians and um, uh, Asian Indians and Chinese immigrants who were heavily impacted by H-1B visas during the COVID. And so all those issues are really urgent issues that really um, you know, are harmful to the community. And so I don't know where you want to put it, but I don't think we should take it off the record, uh, off the table. Uh, in addition, this is one issue that we can work in collaboration with the Latinx community, our African uh, communities and so forth. And every time there's an immigration debate, people in this country does not feel like we are at the table. If this commission does not even want to take on immigration, it's, I think it's going to be a disservice to us in our work, uh, solidarity work with other communities who have been heavily impacted by uh, immigration policies. And so I really just urge all of us to really think through, um, you know, how do we incorporate this without really um, uh, minimizing the impact that it's having on our communities um, globally, but also uh, especially here in the United States. Thanks, King. And I just want to I want to reiterate, I'm not talking about taking immigration off. <laughs> 
I'm just thinking about which subcommittee can own it. We're not talking about taking out immigration, not having a conversation on immigration. What we're really talking about in the past, there have been about usually five subcommittees. And just, just as you've heard from the last commissioners, that is a lot of work with five subcommittees. Right now we have six. Um, and so I would just keep that in mind as to, um, you know, the limited staff we have uh, that we can work that, that, you know, this is a very small team they have to do a lot for us. So that's including the next commission meeting and setting up all the commission uh, subcommittee meetings, as well as helping uh, get access to all of the meetings with the government officials. So I just want, I, it's, it's more of a logistics question. It's not a question of whether we should talk about immigration or not talk about immigration. I don't think we should take it off the table. I'm not asking to take it off the table. I'm just asking, does it need to be a standalone subcommittee or do we want to have it as part of one of the other subcommittees? That's the, that's the question. It's not to take it off the table. Please, please recognize that. Kevin. So I just want to take a quick step back. So I, 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 the reason why I asked the general question to Crystal and Emily and like how many subcommittees were there in the past, I think we need to start just figuring this out mathematically a little bit. We have 23 commissioners. We have limited resources, limited staff. So obviously in the past, they had the maximum of six um, subcommittees because Presumably, you wanted at least three or four people on each subcommittee, and I know people can be on multiple committees, but given uh, just trying to schedule, once you get a really big subcommittee of like seven, eight people, let's say, it, it can get unwieldy a little bit just to schedule, right? So I think if we want to be really nimble and effective, I think what we should do is figure out, are we going to have just five with at least four members on each. And then, of course, people can add on and there can be more than four. But at least at a minimum, each committee would, let's say, have four. And then in terms of addressing which categories go into what, you know, I think we're getting a little caught up in the semantics of, you know, uh, which overall arching name we're going to stick something else into. So, for example, you know, Sono, you made a suggestion. You're just trying to get to limiting the number of actual groups, but if people are getting caught up on the name, you can just title it all in. So you can say, you know, uh, immigration, language access, blah, 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 10 different names to that committee. And then as the subcommittee gathers amongst themselves, they will sort out what they're going to prioritize and people can move around. So it's really more of a procedural thing I think we should figure out versus right now getting caught up on the names. And if it's something gets folded into something else, then it means it's being deminimized and whatnot. So that's just my suggestion. Let's just work a little bit backwards. Let's come up with the five and then come up with the names and make sure we have at least four members on each and then everyone else can add on. But as we know, our biz lives get in the way. We're all very busy people. And sometimes people might not be as active as they hope to be today. And they wanted to be on three committees. But at the end of the day, they might just end up being really active with one, which is okay as long as we have four on each committee to spread the workload. Kevin? That must have been a mic drop, Kevin. Oh, no, I'm here. I just stopped talking. Sorry, sorry, I was, Kevin. I, that was a great... I was uh, <laughs> I, I'm talking on mute, so I apologize. Uh, that is a very good comment, and I 100% agree with you. So uh, let's make some decisions, and uh, let's just uh, uh, let's just talk about which committees we want. Let's just talk the top five. Let's not do the sub right now, because um, we don't have... You, each committee can decide, but let's just go through that if we, if we want to do that. So... Uh, COVID and health, do we want to call it that? Do we want to call it something else? Or do we want to call it, I think I Jen put an a idea in here. Suggestion around health equity. Health equity. Do we want to do health equity, economic equity together, or do we want to do it separate? Uh, Ajay? I think they should be separate. I think they should be separate. Okay. Great. Ajay, do you have any comment on that? And you have your hand um, up. No, I was just going to go back to the immigration discussion. I think for everybody's point of view, immigration is important. But one of the concerns, keeping the requirement or the keeping the scope of the committees to a limited number is also important. So immigration, visas, and everything are tied to the business uh, in a way. So could it be possible to consider bringing uh, immigration under economic and small business? That's one of the options to consider. 
Okay. So we've got lots of recommendations here. Uh, health equity, economic equity is separating. Everybody good with that? Yes. Those yes. are two committees. Okay. Um, Anti-Asian hate and belonging. Separate? Yes. Yes. Right? Um, data disaggregation. Yes. Yes. And do we want language access? I like the suggestion about immigration, citizenship, and language access sort of grouped together. Um, happy to do that. Is everybody good with that? Yes. Yep. I hope that committee has a lot of time on their hands because you guys are going to be doing a lot of work and a lot of trying to get to a lot of meetings, but um, I, I want us to, I want us to think about this for a second as you all think about that committee and that subcommittee and whoever's on it. Um, language access is moving in the federal government in certain places and immigration citizenship status are not always the same things, but uh, I'm going to let the subcommittee figure that out. <laughs> I want to um, sort of uh, bump what Nahid is saying is um, Rather than saying anti-Asian hate, uh, we broaden it out because our community faces a lot of different uh, fronts. Um, so something around racism and discrimination or something like that uh, to be more a little more inclusive. Um, one of the things that I would love to uh, work on a little bit around that is uh, some of the ableism within uh, Mm -hmm. uh, AAPI communities. So I think it would be great if we could broaden that uh, to be a little more inclusive. So why don't we do belonging, inclusion, and hate? Um, Mia, the only comment I would make on this is uh, I know that the federal government is getting a lot of push on anti-Asian hate, given what's going on in the country. And I think if, if we're not seen as even talking about it, it's going to they're going to do things and we should be able to inform that. So but you don't have to. I just put it out there. It's like I know there's a lot coming in, given the recent incidents, um, both in New York, Philadelphia, California, other places. So I don't think we have to start with anti-Asian hate. Maybe we start with belonging, inclusion, and hate and take out the anti-Asian hate piece of it. But I just want to keep that in mind. Um, yeah, have, Victoria? Yeah, I know we have um, kind of limited resources and just kind of the staffing, but I really believe that the immigration, I mean, these are two very important kind of topics. And I mean, I agree with you. I think they're, it's a lot for one committee and I know um, you know, I would recommend separating it out just because the language access work is just kind of cross kind of everything and, you know, the way it's going, I, I just feel like, you know, we, we may have enough kind of interest, I believe, just from the discussion um, okay. to have its own separate committee. Why don't we just have a separate committee there? Language access, take that out of immigration and citizenship status. Can, can we get commissioners that are interested in each of these committees now so we can start um, putting names behind this? So who's interested in immigration and citizenship status? Ajay? Who else? Me, Simon. Grace? Simon? Kaying? Dr. Underwood? Sorry, can we get those names? And Amy? Do we have that, Ajay, Grace, Kaying, Dr. Underwood, and Amy? Uh, Simon, too. Oh, Simon. Sorry, Simon. I don't see your hand up, so I see you're trying to put your hand up. Um, if you can use your if you can use your raise hand function, it just helps me collect all the information. I apologize. Uh, data disaggregation. Kaying. Dr. Underwood, Raynal, Sarah, anyone else? Uh, Emily, Raynal. Uh, 
Um, and then uh, health equity. Victoria. Uh, Kimberly. Carrie. Teresita. And Kamal. And Michelle. Do we capture everyone there? Victoria, Kimberly, Teresita, Carrie, Kamal, and Michelle? No, uh, for some reason my function isn't working right now. But Sorry, was that Mia? Okay. Yeah. Mia. Economic equity, Ajay, Simon, Carrie, Michelle, Louisa, Kimberly, and Ijen, and Smita. I had my hand up too, Kevin. Oh, sorry, Kevin. Kevin. Your thumbs up merged right into the into the logo. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, belonging, inclusion, and hate. Louisa, Robert Underwood, Emily, Grace, Gummel, and Naid, Daniel, and Mia. I put my hand up there too. It merged again. Yeah, Kevin, did I not say your hand's not showing up? So, Kevin, thank you, Kevin, for speaking up. I really appreciate it. But can we also just call that the belonging, inclusion, and anti Asian hate slash racism? I think that yeah, somebody we can do can, that. Yeah, I think that anti Asian is important. Yeah. And language access. Grace, Kamal, Daniel, Mia, Ajay, Victoria. Sorry, my hand was up from the last one. Oh, sorry, Daniel. Take Daniel off of that mine, one. Mine was up too on accident. It was from the last one. Mia, take out Mia on this one, please, on language access. Not, not on the last one. Take out Daniel and Mia. Um, add Kimberly, Carrie, Amy, Simon. Anyone else that I'm missing? And apologies if I'm, I'm missing your hand. Great. Yes. <laughs> Success. Okay, standing ovation for our chair. <laughs> Success. Um, so no. Kudos, everyone. I think we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, so what I would suggest as we move forward from here is we need really quickly, and I know we're, I'm sorry we're into our break, but we just need to get going, keep going. Um, who would like to co-chair or chair immigration as a citizenship status? Can you just raise your hands? Ah, the rubber hits the road. <laughs> Grace. And uh, Kaying. So let's have them co-chair. Data disaggregation. Robert and Raynaud. I see your note, come on. Health equity. Two Islanders. <laughs> hey, it's great. Carrie and Teresita. Economic equity. Ajay and Smita and Simon. Let's put all three of them. Belonging and inclusion. I believe Gummel had raised his hand for that. Louisa. Great. 
language access. All right, I'm gonna go to people that aren't already co-chairing. So Victoria, Kimberly, and Amy. Ajay, I know, I know you're already co-chairing one, so I wanna make sure because there's gonna be a lot in each of these. So I know you can go back and forth in these, but I just wanna put one. All right, are we good here? Um, so just, just as we move forward, a few things to keep in mind. I think it would be good for each of the subcommittee for the chairs to, uh, co-chairs to prioritize what are the key issues that you wanna work on in timing phase. Uh, what I might recommend to each of you is to think about what is already moving in government that we could access into now as opposed to, uh, and then sort of what's medium term and what's long term. So what are the things that you wanna do and, and thinking through that. So um, really appreciate y'all are taking that on. Um, and then I think uh, the, the team will work with you on, on uh, making sure we can get the extra meeting. So one thing that co-chairs may want to think about is you can bring in experts to come with you on co-chairs. Uh, you can have experts come in and join your subcommittee meetings and give you informed input. You can, uh, you can bring in experts to help and work with you. So it's really up to you how you wanna do that. Um, but I, I think it's important that you know that you have access to bring in experts experts to, to inform decisions. Um, Sorry, this is Emily. I'm gonna step in and just make a friendly amendment. So um, the subcommittee will need to assess how it wants to bring uh, outside non-member, non-commissioners on into the subcommittee. So they have to come to a decision. So there's some um, criteria for, for choosing people. Yeah, and I wanna make sure that uh, one one thing I would highly recommend for each of the subcommittee co-chairs or at least one of the co-chairs of the subcommittee is know the rules from Emmeline as to what the what the process is. So we don't we don't run afoul of the process. So please, if one of the members can, if at least one member can, can make sure they're working with. Um, Mia, you had a question? Yeah, no, I meant to put in that I'm fine with doing, uh, helping chair the, the health equity. Oh, you, you would want to co-chair health equity? Yeah. Okay, great. Let's put Mia on there. And I believe um, Sarah would like to do data disaggregation if we can add her there too. And Smita would like to be included in the commit subcommittee on anti-Asian hate and belonging. Okay, everyone. Boy, you guys are going to be busy. <laughs> um, very exciting. This is this is uh, this is great. I mean, I think this is uh, this was the hardest, you know, set of decisions and the the things that we needed to do. I really appreciate um, everyone sort of uh, working through the break uh, to get us to where we are and to to really make sure we can uh, we can get this in. Um, we I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna blow right through break because we are really only about ten minutes uh, left, and I want to make sure we can uh, we can finish up here. So topics for future meetings. Can we talk through? Um, I did hear, let me tell you what I do have. We would like to have DHS, HUD, EPA uh, come in and present, but are there particular topics uh, that you would like to think about for the next for the next commission meeting? That is not subcommission meetings, but this is for the commission meeting. Uh, Kaim. Yeah, I wonder if you can bring um the State Department or an agency that deals with immigration policies and things like that. Or you so again, I would I might suggest Kaying that you do that through the subcommittee first to understand what they're working on, and then. Um, mm -hmm. But I think broader as a commission, it's just I would like if we can stick to the charge that we have, or where we could do that. But that's a great, mm -hmm. it's a good point. But I think you can do that also part of the subcommittee. Okay. Is DOD one of the agencies uh, uh, that uh, uh, the initiative works with? Um, I will ask. I will ask Emmeline to step in here because I don't know the answer to that question. Um, so, Crystal and Erica, they're on the IWG. If I'm, if I'm not incorrect, yeah, and Victoria is saying yes. So they they actually are a member of the interagency working group that you learned about from Crystal yesterday? Uh, 
Yes. So yes, yes. Carrie, the answer is, is yes. Specific for Severica. Is there something specific that you're inquiring about? Yeah, I, I want to. I, I specifically want to know um, uh, why uh, uh, they are impeding the uh, Hawaii's uh, uh, health department uh, efforts to save lives. Again, Simon, I would. I mean, sorry, Carrie. I would suggest that we um, we do this through the subcommittee and have a conversation with them through the subcommittee. I think I'm just going back to what the full commission meeting. What do we want to? I think I think someone, uh, Simon, I believe, suggested uh, treasury, which I think is also important. Um, so happy to add that to the list. Yeah, if I could, if I could just add, Carrie, um, and and um, Madam Chief Commissioner, um, we also because the next full commission meeting is not until May. Um, the subcommittee apparatus to bring in the Department of the Navy or the Department of Defense to talk about um, yeah. Red Hill might be better done sooner rather than later to wait for the next quarterly meeting, if that makes sense. Yeah. That does make sense. Thank you. With, with all due respect, but also knowing the urgency of 